So here's an example from worksheet four of a problem that we are going to do. So with this problem, we're going to have to start with our force diagrams, just like always. So they're asking you to start with that. So if we look at this, our force diagram of this car would be, so we're looking at the car, and we are on a slope. So we'll draw a dash line. So here's my car. I know I have force gravity, which is down. I know I have a force normal, which is perpendicular to the surface. It's right here. Then it says I have 1,200 newtons of friction and drag that oppose the motion, so they're going to go in the opposite direction. So this is my force, friction, and force, drag. And since I know the value, I'm going to put that out to 1,200. You know what that force is. Now, I'm also going to sign this problem. I'm going to say, if I'm moving up this ramp, this is my positive direction. So if I am making that my positive direction, I'm going to give this a negative sign because that's down the ramp. Okay. So you can sign the problem however you want to. You just need to keep it consistent within that problem you're signing. Okay. Now, the other force on here is the force of these wheels. They have grip to go up the ramp. So that is what we call force traction. So that is a force that is giving the car the ability to go up the ramp without spinning. Now, I need to divide one of my um, forces into a vectors. Now, the force traction, force normal, and force friction are all 90 degrees, so it's the force gravity I'm going to divide. So this is force gravity in the y direction, which is into the ramp, and then down the ramp would be force gravity in the x direction. Okay. Now, another thing I know on here is that this angle right here is 22 degrees. Since that's 22, here's another 90. So if I was to figure out what is this angle up here, and when I draw this force gravity y, this is always perpendicular to the ramp. So guess what? This is also perpendicular to the ramp, to the left and to the right. So if I have force, I have this angle is 90, and this is 22, that means that my angle on for this other one is 68. Well, if this is 68 and this is a 90 here, isn't this 22 then? There's my 22. This is a little trig. Okay? So now I know the angle here is 22. So that's going to help me solve my problem. So I'm just showing you how we figure out what those angles are. So the first thing that we're looking at is what is the weight of the car? Well, they told us the mass up here. So we know our equation, force gravity equals the weight which is the mass times gravity. So it looks like we have 950 kilograms times that negative 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So that's the force that gravity pulls everything to the Earth. And that would give us that the weight is a negative 9,319.5 newtons. Um, that's what I got for an answer. Now, they want you to calculate the normal force. So that's this force right here. They want this normal force calculated. If we look in the vertical direction, I haven't put on here what's congruent yet, don't we know that force gravity in the Y is congruent to force normal? Because this car is not making any um, change in its motion vertically. So those two have to be equal but opposite. So then I can write the equation. Those forces are balanced. That force normal plus force 
gravity in the y equals zero. Now, I can calculate this with some trig because I know this angle, and now I know this side right here. This right here is the hypotenuse. That's that side. So if I want to calculate this side over here, it looks like that's the adjacent um, side to the angle. So couldn't I say force gravity in the y equals the cosine, since it's the adjacent to the hypotenuse, over times 22 equals force gravity in the y, so the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse was a negative 9,319.5 newtons. You put this over 1, cross multiply, and I get an answer that it's a negative 8,000. 640.9 newtons. Well, if this is plus a negative 8,640.9 newtons equals zero, we know this, then it's congruent to it. So my answer is a positive 8,640.9 newtons. So that's what the force normal is. Now the other one that they want us to calculate is the force on the car that allows it to go up the hill. So isn't that the force traction? Okay, so that's what they want us to calculate it. Now, we need to look in the vertical direction. We have um, a couple different forces. So this is the one they want us to calculate. Oops. So this is the one that they want us to calculate right here. And then the other ones that we have that are in the horizontal direction are this one. So we can write our equation and this one. So it looks like we have three forces to sum up there. So if I was to write my equation, it would be force, gravity, and the x plus force, friction, I'm just going to use friction, it's the drag to, plus the force, traction, equals zero. Because we know they're balanced, it has constant velocity. Constant velocity means that all the forces are balanced, or if it's at rest, are balanced. So I need to add my forces together. So I know this force, friction, and I sign that as a negative value. <coughs> I'm going to solve for force traction. Now I can go up and I can solve for this force FGX. This angle is opposite, so I would use the sine function. So if I want to use the sine function, I would say the sine of 22 equals force gravity in the X over my force um, gravity, which was a negative 9319.5. So that's going to tell me that my force gravity in the x, I got that it was, I put this over 1 and cross multiply, a negative 3,491 newtons plus a negative 1,200 newtons, plus force traction equals zero. So when I add these up, I get force traction equals 4,691 newtons. And it is positive because I said going up that ramp was in the positive direction. Okay. So this would be how we would do a problem with something that is at an angle and it has got balanced forces on it.